little mad. They pulled a fast one, and I didn't see it, and I feel kind of stupid. But they're always going to pull fast ones. We're going to miss a lot of them. Yeah. Well, I just Is feel this dumb. Really obvious. Uh, kind of. You recall maybe four weeks ago, the NDAA, National Defense Authorization Act for 2014. It's, this is a recurring theme every year. Uh, BO came out, it was going through the House, going through the Senate. And I had read through pretty much 803 pages, I think, of this thing. And I, and I, I think I said there was, you know, there was a little bit of off-world space stuff in there that was kind of semi-interesting. And I've been tracking it for a while. And uh, but I didn't really see anything like the sections 215 and, you know, and 710 and all of the detention stuff that we saw in the 2012-2013 uh, National Defense Authorization Act. So I let it slip a little bit. And on the, the 26th, when we were still in the midst of, oh, I don't know, what was the world talking about? Oh, yeah. The Duck Dynasty guy. That's re that's really what all the news right, was. Which is the key that we had. I mean, we have to bear down when that happens. Yeah, and exactly. And, and I, I we, we looked at it as a way to cover up Target, which all helped, certainly. Uh, it certainly did not um, hurt the fact that they switched out the entire bill for a different one. And that's what the president signed from his vacation address in Hawaii. So it was well, you remember the year before that when they slipped the whole bill in, and we accidentally caught it on C-SPAN. Well, they signed yeah, the president signed it in the in the in the dark of night on the thirty first. Uh, that's what happened last time. <clears throat> this time it was the day after Christmas, but it was a whole different bill. This it was three three so zero four. The old bill, the, a, a, a bill. Oh, no, you were reading the presented bill. Yes, and then a whole new bill was presented. And voted on, and I and nothing. There was nothing on C-SPAN. Nothing about yeah, this. Yeah, no, it was. It was one of the. It was like last time where they slipped it in, and somebody. Well, somebody's talking about brush fires. But they. They. It's a whole different document this well, time. So you can do whatever you want if you're slipping it in. So I got the new document, and holy crap! Really? The, oh, yes, really. Um, so it's the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2014. The, the only t sections that are uh, of importance, although th there's a lot as always, and of course I didn't have time to get through everything, uh, but I did get through the sections 932 and the 1071s, which i just like to touch on briefly because it is important. And trust me, no one's going to report on this. So you might as well just get it from here. Everything's marked up in the show notes, of course. Uh, so Cyber Command, is a, all of the cyber stuff that we were expecting shows up in this new document. It was not in the one I was looking at. Is Richard Clark named? Almost, because there's <laughs> a lot of openings for uh, stuff that can be uh, provided for by the uh, private industry and even other countries. As gifts, Ooh. no less. And I'll, I'll tell you about that. So the Secretary of Defense shall take such actions... As it considers appropriate to provide the United States Cyber Command Operational Military Units with infrastructure and equipment, enabling access to the Internet and other types of networks to permit the United States Cyber Command to conduct wartime missions and execute offensive military cyber operations. And this is interesting to me because they're taking real warfare language where you blow people's limbs off and bash their heads in and burn their cities down to rubble and using that in a computer network environment. And it's just not the same thing, but they're making it sound like it's exactly the same thing and, and allowing, I guess, our um, cyber forces to execute offensive military cyber operations, which means it's not necessarily done out of as a defensive move. And I'm not so sure I'm okay with that uh, because they have no clue what they're doing. It's, no one really knows what the, what the result of, of real cyber warfare could be, and I think it's very dangerous. But anyway, it's all okay. Go ahead and be offensive and do whatever you want according to the act that, by the way, pretty much everybody signed off on. I think there's two Democrats who didn't si sign off on this and seven Republicans. So pretty much everybody's all in on it. Because they, they probably didn't read it. They're like, yeah, whatever, it's fine. I think just... the word probably is not the uh, <laughs> they didn't best read word. It. Yeah, they didn't read it. Yeah, there you go. Right. Now, there will be, there will be a, a designated 
for purposes of defense for defense policy, a principal cyber advisor. And this will be a new job. Vivek Kundra, welcome back. <laughs> oh God. So we'll have to see who that who that is, but the principal cyber advisor shall be responsible for the overall supervision of cyber activities related to offensive missions, defense of the United States, and defense of Department of Defense networks, including oversight of policy and operational considerations. Yeah, you, you Richard Clark. It's going to be someone like that, yeah. Um, I think it'll be him. He's the one who's been pushing for this job. He's the one who created the job, I'm sure of it. He's behind what you just read. Oh, it's, but this is bad. You can't just have some guy coming in who's going to be the principal cyber advisor and says, yeah, yeah, I think you can go ahead and, and hack those guys. And if that's Richard Clark, wow. Uh, so this guy will integrate the cyber expert, or gal, will integrate the cyber expertise and perspectives of appropriate organizations. And this is really a coming together of uh, the Defense Department and intelligence communities, not the CIA. They're not mentioned anywhere. It's all about NSA and Department of Defense. Kind of, they are a part, part of the department, of course. Interesting. He will also select team members, designate the team leader. Uh, we'll work on the training of personnel. Uh, so that is essentially your uh, cyber advisor. Uh, now let me go down here a little bit. Cyber advisor. Yeah, it's it's it's, it's, it's cyber advisor. What else can we do? <laughs> I'm sorry, the principal cyber advisor. The, princi- to, the principal. I'm the principal cyber advisor of America. <laughs> of America. <laughs> Yeah, he will also provide an evaluation of the potential roles of the reserve components in the concept of operation, the concept of employment for cyber operation forces required. So now we can have reserves being, I mean, we're moving towards full-scale cyber war. This is how... Yeah, it, we're the ones starting it. Yeah, well, we're... Nobody it, else even talks about it. Yeah. So essentially, there'll be no more... So tr- we're going to bring down our own grid. Who? Kn- yeah, why not? Well, there's, part, there's something in this act about that as too. Uh, in cons- now, here's where it got a little scary to me. In consultation with the Secretary of Homeland Security, consideration of ways to ensure that the governors of several states through the Council of Governors, now that's that organization that is hun- f- funded with $100 million um, that br- brought us Common Core, as an example. Uh, so the ensure the governors of the, the Council of Governors, as appropriate, have an opportunity to provide the Secretary of Defense and uh, Secretary of Homeland Security an independent evaluation of state cyber capabilities and state cyber needs that cannot be fulfilled through the private sector. Uh, so there will be a push now to have your local law enforcement have some form of cyber capabilities. And it, that's like giving a guy root access and saying, whatever you do, never, ever do RM star. <laughs> Section 936, cyber outreach and threat awareness for small business. Uh, these will be contracts that will be awarded by the Department of Defense to assist small business. To one, understand the gravity and scope of cyber threats. So that's a marketing thing. We could get in on that money. We need to do something. (laughs) Two, develop a plan to protect intellectual property. And three, develop a plan to protect the networks of small businesses. This, I feel, is wrong. So one of the impetuses behind this, obviously, is the movie industry. Yes, of course. That's the intellectual property. So Hollywood has a piece of this. Yeah. Yeah. And their networks, and, and apparently the government's going to use taxpayer dollars to protect their networks which uh, which I think I think you're right this can only mean people streaming or you know it's, it's Hollywood stuff it I, it has no bear look I, I don't think the no agenda doing business as no agenda is going to get any, get any offers from the government to help protect our network <laughs> don't think that's going to happen no. All right, Section 938 of the National Defense Authorization Act, 2014, supervision of the acquisition of cloud computing capabilities. Now, this is what Vivek did start off. Yes, Vivek is behind this. <laughs> uh, the chairman of the Joint Requirements Oversight Council supervises the following, the review, development, modification, and approval of requirements for cloud computing solutions for data analysis and storage by the armed forces and defense agencies including requirements for cross-domain enterprise-wide discovery and correlation of data stored in cloud computing databases. So that's the integration 
of uh, uh, defense and armed forces and intelligence into the same systems, uh, which by itself, just having that in a cloud situation is, as far as I'm concerned, a, a risk. Uh, integration of plans uh, with uh, enterprise-wide plans of the armed forces. Okay, we already did that one. Um, integration with intelligence community efforts. The secretary shall coordinate with the director of national intelligence to ensure that activities under this section are integrated with the intelligence community information technology enterprise, which is I-C-I-T-E, eyesight, <laughs> in order to achieve interoperability, information sharing, and other efficiencies. Now, section 940, control, this is where, this is where I got a little, little heebie-jeebies. Control of the proliferation of cyber weapons. Let me just bring that back to you. Control of the proliferation of cyber weapons. So there's an anti-proliferation clause in here, and cyber weapons uh, would, uh, well, I mean, you can interpret this any way you want. But it seems to me would be uh, viruses and Trojans. I can't think of anything else. What else would it be? Well, they're they're using nuclear terminology. That's the problem I have. So but yeah, have, I have a problem with that too. It's 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 not good. So we have a, a, a anti- proliferation. It's like there. Oh, there was ten yesterday. Now there's twenty. No, no, no. Yeah. So I guess you can't do copy paste or something. Uh, So here's what it's about. Interagency process for establishment of policy. The president will establish an interagency process to provide for the establishment of an integrated policy to control the proliferation of cyber weapons, which could be a ping. I don't know. And what is a cyber weapon? Pings. (laughs) Pings must be banned. (laughs) The command ping is not operative on your on your system. Uh, Through unilateral and cooperative law enforcement activities, financial means, diplomatic engagement, and such other means as the president considers appropriate. So if if you're being accused of creating a cyber weapon, which is very broad in interpretation, they can cut off all your money, I guess, financial means. And cooperative law enforcement can come and get you. Industry participation. Is it possible no agenda shows a cyber weapon? We are we are definitely a psychological cyber weapon, for sure. Industry participation, the president shall include to the extent practical, practicable, private industry participation in the process established under this subsection. Uh, so there's your fascistic government who is going to have private industry cooperate to thwart you from using or proliferating cyber weapons, which is not really... Defined. Uh, Objectives to identify the intelligence, law enforcement, and financial sanctions tools that can and should be used to suppress the trade in cyber tools and infrastructure that are or can be used for criminal, terrorist, or military activities while preserving the ability of governments and the private sector to use such tools for legitimate purposes of self-defense. Okay, this is a key clause because this is ex- this is where we all lose. This is like saying, well, torrent, BitTorrent can be used for uh, distributing Linux. That's exactly what this is. And it's not going to work. They will take away all... This is taking away our tools. Tools. Well, now, this, uh, this is interesting because if we take it back to Hollywood again, mm-hmm. Hollywood had nothing but agonizing trouble over during the net and they learned a lesson Mm -hmm. during the napster period when part of the argument i think was done by boys the lawyer uh, was that if something could be used for in other words you have a product that can be used to do illegal downloads Mm -hmm. but if there if there's a single legal use for it then it must remain in place. And you, in other words, you can't do anything. You can't take it out of the out of the picture because there's a, a legitimate use, and that's the case with with BitTorrent and the torrent distribution of shows like ours. Right. So they're after that. They're, yes. They. This yes. is what they're targeting. This particular thing, and then I've slipped it in this bill. Mm-hmm. Hollywood literally has slipped, gotten involved with the National Defense uh, Authorization Act. There's no doubt about it. I, I'm with you. This is this is also a called as same section to establish a statement of principles to control the proliferation of cyber weapons, including principles for controlling the proliferation of cyber weapons that can lead to expanded cooperation and engagement with international partners. 
It's very uh, international part. Why? Yeah, I don't know. Well, they just set up that studio in China. Oh yes, well, a giant billion dollar studio. Mm-hmm. Anyway, onward. Um, now, uh, in subtitle G, <laughs> page four hundred eighty-six. Miscellaneous authorities and limitations, easily overlooked by any journalist uh, in the mainstream, because it's miscellaneous authorities. <laughs> it can't be much. Yeah, that's the first place I'd look. (laughs) Section 1071, enhancement of capacity of the United States government to analyze captured records. Now, this is very (laughs) interesting. Wait a minute. (laughs) Yeah, I knew you'd like it. I knew you'd like it. What? Now, you'll recall the advice from the president's blue ribbon panel, which included all these lawyers. Not really. Um, The recommendation regarding the, uh, the NSA... Uh, metadata program, which, by the way, the secret FISA court has reauthorized. Yeah. Oh, huh. Secret. Stunning. The secret Gulag court has reauthorized. Um, the recommendation was to, you know, to not have the NSA store this, but have a either the, uh, you know, have a, a separate entity, a private sector entity, um, uh, store all of this for us. Well, this is what solidifies this and takes it ten steps further. Uh, So there's a new section here in the uh, United States Code for the Conflict Records Research Center. Conflict Records Research Center. The Secretary of Defense may establish a center to be known as the Conflict Records Research Center, and the purpose of the center shall be the following. To establish a digital research database, including transactions, and to facilitate research and analysis of records captured from countries organizations, and individuals now or once hostile to the United States with rigid adherence to academic freedom and integrity. (laughs) Did did, did you just burp? Espionage. Uh, Yeah. Well, I have some of the definitions, too. Uh, But first, number two. Consistent with the protection of national security information, personally identifiable information, and intelligence sources and methods to make a significant portion of these records available to researchers as quickly and responsibly as possible while taking into account the integrity of the academic process and risks to innocents or third parties. Now, the way I read this is they're talking about building a huge database that everything goes into and and anybody who has the right access can jump in and research records. Yeah. Actual records. That's exactly what it is. Now, this is where I can go over all the billing and financial accounts of Huawei. Okay, now here's where it got a little... I didn't know they had them as a customer. (laughs) Bill, get on this. Get on that. Support from other United States government departments or agencies. Uh, Anyone may may help out with this database. And then there's a whole thing here about acceptance of gifts and donations. The Secretary of Defense may accept from any source any gift or donation... For purposes of defraying the costs or enhancing the operations of the center. What? <laughs> yeah. The source is spec- Wait a minute. Listen. Let's, let's break that down for a well, second. Well, let me give you the details and then I'll break it down. The sources specified in this paragraph are the government of a state or a political subdivision of a state, the government of a foreign country, a foundation or other charitable organization, including a foundation or charitable organization that is organized or operates under the laws of a foreign country, or any source in the private sector of the United States or a foreign country. They may uh, give gifts of money, of property, of equipment, anything they want to help out. Funds transferred to are accepted by the Secretary of Defense under the section extortion scheme. Funds transferred to or accepted by the Secretary of Defense under this section shall be credited to appropriations available to the Department of Defense for the center and shall be available for the same purposes and shall be subject to the same conditions and limitations uh, as applied. Now, definitions. The term captured record. Remember, this is the Captured Records Research Center. The term captured record means... A document, audio file, video file, or other material captured during combat operations from countries, organizations, or individuals now or once hostile to the United States. 
The term gift or donation means any gift or donation of funds, material, including research materials, real or personal property, or services, including lecture services services, and faculty services. Uh, this is the definitive Gulag database. And it's kind of like y- you, if you contribute to the database, you can get a tax credit. That's the way I'm seeing it. Hey, here's some research materials. Uh, let me put it in there. It's worth about a uh, thousand bucks. I can get a tax credit. It's a gift. I think there's that element. I think there's. I think this is multi-dimensional. Whoever put this together uh, really has something on the ball in terms of um, this sort of. Essentially, this has got to be illegal in more ways than one. First, you redefine everything. You redefine. You know what is this, what is a war? A cyber war. So you're in the cyber war. You can be in the cyber war with everybody. And so you can take all their stuff if you can get into their machines through uh, whatever back doors they're available or Windows 8 <laughs> or anything that, you know, has a, access by the government. And according to the PRISM slide, you know, everybody's wide open for that. So we can take all the stuff. And so we do that, and especially all these cloud guys that went to the cloud. You know, that cloud stuff is done. It's over. And then the people that you can't fully define as enemies because you, you're going to get in trouble if you say, well, France is – you can't do it. You can't say France or Great Britain are our enemies, but you can, you can request them to donate. Yeah, could you, could you donate your records, please? Can you just, just give us all your stuff yeah. as a donation? And there's no tax write-off for them. For people within the country, for example, there will be some guys that maybe took the advice of keeping everything in-house and – and the government wants their stuff. So, well, you can't have our stuff. Well, we can get it. You know, we can get it through a, a, one of these letters. One of the other guys. <laughs> the, the other guys will happily donate. The other guys are, well, there's also the, the, you know, we have these national security letters we can lay on you. Know, we can find some ways. There may be, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. There may be national security letter uh, templates that we don't know anything about. Yeah, like the that ones. don't that, yeah, ask for exactly. specific records. It could be like. We want all your financial documents. Yeah. So we don't anything. know that that doesn't exist because the national security letter is secret and the courts can't look at it and no one's done anything about them. The fact that they have they allow them in the first place means they can be abused and they're being abused because there's the thousands and thousands. And, and, of the, and the FBI can just write them. They don't need, even need a job. Yeah, the FBI just, just write some them. guy in his office. I got one here. So he's writing them. So, so this could go on. So you can go to a company and say, "We just, just, just give us your. Here's the choice. We're going to give you one of these letters that you might want to look at it just secretly, uh, or you can just give us all your stuff and we'll give you a tax write off." Yes. Google. Well, we, I don't want to want to give you all our stuff. No, 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 no. Right. You give yeah, us all, all, your, all stuff. your stuff. Can you can you turn down your your your? your you're just over modulating a little on your. No, I'm end. screaming. Maybe. Uh, oh no, it's okay. Then just back off. Back off, man. Tell me to get an extra fist in there. <laughs> yeah, they had jam your fist in there. So, yeah, no, this is bad. Well, it's... It, but the, the, the fact that it's even getting through so easily, which I think was part of that little commentary by Ellsberg. You know, he says, you know, they respect the American public because they have to lie to them. Yeah. But then the, public, the, the American public just just laughed. A lot of this stuff is just done behind closed doors, just snuck in. Yeah. Our Congress is totally off the wall corrupt. Well, th- but this is also a failure, a failure of epic proportion of the, your news media. This is a failure by the New York Times, by the Washington Post, by uh, the Guardian. All the people who are, you know, the the heroes of morality and justice, they're full of crap. They're, just, they're, they're all, all they can do is talk about, should Snowden have uh, a- a- amnesty? Which is another thing that's being set up uh, some for some reason, but there was no, and when I say mainstream, of course there there's good reporting, of course there's, and I have a couple of links in the show notes. Of course, people see this and write something about it. Although most of the writing, as is the um, the press release on WhiteHouse.gov, focuses your attention towards Section 1034 and 1035, which is about Guantanamo Bay. And the transfer of prisoners, and of course, you know, the mainstream journalists, maybe because oh, they're so underpaid. Although I don't think they're more underpaid than I am, and they're so, they're so weary from all that they're doing. That oh well, I'll just report on the Guantanamo Bay stuff. I have no time to look at the rest. 
whatever the reason. They're doing you yeah. a disservice. It's a disservice. This is very important stuff. Our audience, our producers understand this stuff. They understand what it means to have a database and what it means to donate something. And particularly if it's donating records and get a tax write-off, which is spelled out explicitly. And you just, oh, just, just make sure you're a nonprofit, you're good to go. I mean, this is, and this is fascism. This is fascism. They should call this the National Fascism Authorization Act, the NFAA. We need a new word. <laughs> there is no new word. Fas- fascism has a bad reputation. Now, uh, <laughs> yeah, there's a reason for the bad reputation. <laughs> it winds up with people getting killed. 